claim is Magura is my name. I'm a Zimbabwean, but I stay here in Moleplore, Mosela Kukuat. Let us glorify God. Yes, may you kindly share with us your testimony. Our kids is quite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but see, I'm here for prophet's confirmation. Anyway, I will speak in my broken English, never mind. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was last year. You might ask yourself, last year, why then you come today? You know, when you are not used to speak in in front of such a congregation, such a crowd like this, it's not easy. You need to be brave enough. Yeah, so that's why I came today. Uh, last year, around May, I, I started to come here in May. Uh, by that time, they used to say, after service, they used to say, those who are here for the first time, you can remain behind. But that day it was not my first time, but I just remained behind because I wanted to ask something concerning about my life to the man of God. <laughs> then I was attended by evangelist also. I told him, Pastor, I really don't understand what is, what, what's wrong on earth with me. I work like an elephant, but I eat like an ant. <laughs> then he, he told me that it's not only you in your family facing that, that challenge. Everyone in your family is facing that problem. And I confirm it to be true. Because if I, if I can put an eye in our family, I have got two elder brothers. Uh, we were working at a certain gold mine in Zimbabwe, all of us together, three of us. Then that mine get closed, that's when I came here. And this other elder brother, he started buying and selling of gold. You know, when, as, as Prophet said, he, he said it's, it's, it's a generational case. You know, when you are in, in, in a situation like that, it doesn't mean you cannot get money. You might get it, but soon you get it, it might develop wings and fly away. Uh, this brother of mine, he started buying and selling of gold. He was making money, good money. But the problem with him, once he gets a meaningful amount of money to him it means he must have a new girlfriend so today he is broke due to that to that uh, that spirit uh, not only broke he is now sick by the time he, he, he was saving money when, for you to know he has got money, you just see by him disappearing. You come back when the money is finished. But now I don't know if I'm wrong, if I can say he is now a destitute. Then the other brother of mine, when the, ma when the mine gets closed, he went back to the village. It's just a remote area. I need more to talk about the You know, I realized in life where there are some people who don't bother themselves about tomorrow. That brother of mine, I think, Koko Raw Area Ko, once he can get a plate of polish and some cups of traditional beer. To him, life is perfect. And there is me, I have nothing in life. If I may take you back uh, to that day when you had an encounter 
with the evangelist of God. How did you feel when he brought to light what you never told him? Yeah, I started I, when when he told me about everything in in, in our in, in my family. That's when I know I am at the right place. This is a living church. You know, churches are different, but some churches, I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but some churches are dead. This is not my first, my first church. I've been in churches, but this one is a living one. receiving those words of prophecy from the evangelist of God what are you believing in God for we know that God reveals to redeem after he told me that he said but soon, soon you leave this place that case is over Amen. although I have nothing tangible today but I can see a glimmer of light ahead of me. Let us glorify God. Let us glorify God again. And the other testimony is about my healing. Uh, it, it, it was last year again. I get sick. I don't know what kind of a disease was it. Was I didn't visit the hospital. I thought it was flu. I bought a made lemon, but it didn't help me. But later on, I realized this is beyond flu. Was sometimes I was I was bleeding through the nose. Sometimes I was bleeding through the mouth. When I cough, sometimes I cough out blood. Then. It took me about two weeks in that situation. Then one day there was an all-night prayer here. I came here. Soon I soon I enter the gate. I meet prophet. He asked me, "How are you?" I said, "I'm okay, but flu is about to kill me." Then he said, "No, it's well. It is well." When the service started. I was standing by that corner. I started feeling the heat which I didn't know where it was coming from. At the same time, I feel like I want to visit the toilet. And again, I was shivering. I asked myself, what's going on now? You know, as I was shivering, uh, I knew I, I might fall down. You know, when everyone is sitting down, then you fall. Uh, it, it means every eye will be looking at you, and I didn't want that. Okay, apart from the bleeding that you had, what other changes did you experience in your body? Uh, I was not eating. Every food, it was tasteless to me. As you said, upon just stepping in this place, you experienced changes. What did you believe at that time? Uh, by that time, I didn't know what was happening. I was just asking myself. It was a debate by myself. What is going on? Were you like that when, while you were still at home? Or it just changed upon arrival? It just changed upon uh, arrival. Okay. Then, then when, while this day was shivering, I helped myself by leaning against that wall. That side, I was standing by that by that wall. Because I, I didn't want to fall down because when you fall down, people ask, who is that one? Who is, who is it? Okay, is that one? So I didn't want that. Then it took me about 25 to 30 minutes in that situation. And then later, I was okay. That's when I realized that, okay, so it was my, re my healing process. Let us glorify God. 
when you step where there is the presence of God, even your body shall tell you that indeed I have stepped where there is a meeting. This is what he encountered that day, the living spirit of God. Yes, you can continue. Yeah, that's all. Um, now that God has touched your situation, he has healed you, what can you say? Words of thanks and also to those who are suffering from various illness, those who have been tormented by uh, diseases out there, what can you say to them to encourage and to uplift their faith? Uh, what I can say to the congregation is when you don't understand your life, when you don't know what is really taking place in your life, this is the place to be. There are men of God and women of God who, who have the spiritual binoculars to see what you cannot see with your naked eye. Let us continue to put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Mr. Magura says that it was last year, May, that he received words of prophecy from one of the evangelists that said, Your whole family works hard, but nothing good comes out of it. It is as though you are all working for nothing. This, Mr. Magura, is a generational curse. Confirming these words of prophecy, Mr. Magura shares that with all his siblings, no one is working and getting any fruit of their labor. This is something that has been affecting him too. They would as a family make money, but would be unable to account for the money. As Mr. Magura gives these words of prophecy confirmation, he believes that God will touch this particular issue in his family. Let us glorify God. <laughs> Further, Mr. Magura gives testimony on healing. Last year, Mr. Magura shares that he was suddenly sick. It felt as though he had a flu, but it took longer than expected and he had started to get worried. It was during one of the all-night services last year that as he attended the service, he began to experience a rise in temperature as he felt extremely hot. Not only that, but he shivered extremely. As he encountered the man of God, the man of God spoke words of declaration upon his life and to the glory of God, it was indeed the end of his sickness. Let us glorify God. We thank you, Mr. Magura, for sharing with us your words of prophecy confirmation. And truly, we believe that God shall indeed manifest in your family and in your life greatly. And indeed, continue to believe in God, continue to trust in God, make the word of God a standard of your life, and you will indeed hold on unto this powerful healing testimony. Let us glorify God. Thank you. Thank you. 